Well, hello, we are back in the basement. The antenna has been dipped in the varnish and it should be dry now. If it's just tacky to the touch, dryish, that'll be fine. We can, uh, we can have a look at it just like that. So, I will take the antenna out of its little drying rack and uh, let's have a look at it. So, so here we are, that is the antenna with the, uh, my coating on, uh, my varnish coating. And it's very interesting to see actually because if you can see there, right at the end of it, there is a, uh, a little drip. I can't quite see that. Hmm. Let's see if I can find a better background. Maybe this car will be better so you can see that. There we are. You see there's a drip at the end. And it's all just drips down to the end there as well. And it looks suspiciously like the, uh, the drip that was on the antenna before. And of course what happened, it's quite simple, I dipped the antenna into the, the varnish coating like that and hung it up to dry, uh, which is exactly what happened to the, uh, the original antenna. And uh, the, uh, the varnish of course will, will dribble down the, uh, the antenna here and it will form a little blob at the end and it will dry you know, and harden. And that is why there's that little blob at the end. I will, I'll take a photo of this because I took a photo um, earlier of this in the previous video just to show you a comparison of the antenna with the original coating on and the antenna with my uh, dip in the varnish. Uh, but now we dipped it in the varnish, why don't we test it again and find out whether or not this varnish dip, this second varnish dip, has in any way affected the performance of the antenna. Um, so I'm not going to do a, um, well I, actually no, I'll do, a, I'll do a comparison the same way again. We'll do the exact same comparison and we'll see how accurate we can get it. So there we are, stick that into the test rig and uh, route the cable around here, plug it in and I will start one of the tests. Uh, the transmitter is still transmitting, uh, so that shouldn't be a problem. What I will do is I will just, on the, uh, on the software defined radio machine here, the, the little computer here, uh, I'll zoom in and I'll do a quick signal test just to make sure we are ooh, still receiving that signal from the, uh, the test transmitter. Quit that there. Uh, this is a command here. Test that. <clears throat> yeah, so we are receiving a signal. It's a bit low, the signal at the moment, so we'll to find out why that is. Okay, so the antenna is set up now. It's all ready to go. Um, I actually just tried to run this test before, but uh, the, the Lego Mindstorms ran out of battery, so I had to uh, just go and replace the batteries in that. But we're ready to go now. I've done a quick initial um, RF test to make sure we can receive a signal. Uh, let's try that again. Da -da -da. That looks perfectly okay to me. So what I'll do is run the test procedure. Um, I'll leave it here, leave you to watch it fast forwarded on the video. And then we will analyze the results again. What I will do actually is I'll run this test uh, maybe two or three times. Uh, and put those two or three traces on the, uh, the plot on the uh, spreadsheet. Uh, so you can see that even between tests in the same place, you're going to get a little bit of margin of error uh, just because this is not a perfect test setup and it's not using uh, uh, 20,000 pounds worth of kit on each end. But let's run the test and uh, we'll see what we get. <laughs> Okay, so that run is complete. I think the video might have uh, run out of space uh, before that, but that's complete. Um, what I'll do now is run it again, uh, so we can just compare those two sets of results. Here we go.
Second test finished. Uh, uh, should we do another one? No, I can't be bothered. That'll do. So we've got two tests now. I will overlay those two sets of data and we'll see what happens and what, what it looks like on our plot. Okay, so here we are. I've plotted the results of uh, the test running the antenna in the 360 degree uh, radiation pattern test uh, twice. And we see again that uh, even with the varnish on, the antenna is still omnidirectional. It's still an omnidirectional antenna, uh, which is proven by this, this trace here and by the experiments we've, uh, we've done previously. Uh, but the reason for doing this twice is just to demonstrate that you can do this test three or four times and there'll always be slight variances in the results you get. So you can see that there is a, a slight difference here between these two readings. The difference is about uh, sort of 0.5 to just under 1 dB difference between some of these readings here. And uh, that is to be expected. And the reason we wanted to, to do this is because we ran a test in the last video, uh, which was a test with the antenna with the conformal coating and the antenna without the conformal coating, and we saw that there was uh, some slight differences. And I've got that uh, test plot here. Here we are, that's the test with and without conformal coating. And as you can see, sometimes it's, it's a bit more, sometimes a bit less. That's just what you expect. There is a margin of error with all these sort of tests. And what we have here is well within that margin of error. And what we have here is also well within that margin of error. Uh, and, and so that's it. That is, is really just to prove that, uh, uh, one, that you can dip the antenna in some varnish and you still get very similar results. And two, you can run the test a few times and you still get uh, very similar results. Okay, so now we have uh, an experiment where I'm going to compare the, the gain, and we've already done this, haven't we? But I'll, I'll do it again anyway, just uh, on a video. To make a point, we're gonna compare the gain of this Harvard antenna here uh, to the gain of another simple dipole that I've made out of bits of tat. Uh, this is the, the antenna here I made. It is a bit of a Wi-Fi antenna, and I just soldered uh, a bit of wire at the top, a bit of a bottom, it's a half-wave dipole, a quarter wave at the top and quarter wave at the bottom. And we actually expect this to be slightly higher gain than the antenna here. Uh, to make it fair, um, <laughs> Mark, I've placed the antenna here so that the side of the strip is facing the transmitter. Uh, just to make sure, and the transmitter is, it's obviously not, so it's not there because there's nothing there. The transmitter is right around here. Let's zoom in. There it is. It's still there. It's still transmitting. And uh, that's what we're going to be using. So here we are. So let's just get this set up so you can see it all. Uh, so first I'll take three readings using the, uh, the Harvard antenna here. So reading one is 26.04. Reading two is 26.18. Reading three is 26.11. So neg 26.04, neg 26.18, and neg 26.11. What I'll do now is I will detach the Harvard antenna, and I will attach my little clutched up dipole thing and we'll see what the difference in performance is. <clears throat> there we are. How do I get that to stay there? Oh, it's just going to sit there, isn't it? Nice job. Oh. Okay, so there we are. That's all set up. I will just put this down here a minute so it doesn't interfere with the arrow readings. Okay, and zoom back into the... Uh, into that there. Let's take three readings. And um, reading number one is so twenty three point four nine. Remember that the lower the number, the uh, uh, the better the received signal strength. Twenty four point oh five. 
and the third figure is 24.49. I'm not even going to average those. Uh, the figures from the hard antenna were 26, uh, 0 0.04, 0 0.18, 0 0.11, and the receive signal from my little bit of wire, my simple dipole antenna, is uh, it, it's it's two, uh, at least two dB greater, which is what you'd expect uh, a dipole having about two dB extra gain over a um, a ground plane vertical. So, so, so Mark, your antenna here, the Harvard antenna, uh, it isn't directional, we've proven that um, in, in any way, and actually my little dipole aerial has a higher gain than this Harvard antenna. Uh, I don't know how much uh, uh, easier you can put this, um, Mark is wrong. Uh, it's, uh, you know, this is a very simple video to make, it's, what else can you say? Um, Andrew McNeil, who has a, an excellent antenna channel on YouTube, go and subscribe to Andrew McNeil, it's really, really good stuff, uh, if you're into this sort of stuff. Uh, absolutely fascinating insights into various antennas. Uh, he's also said the same, he's actually made a mock-up of a dielectric lens to show you how big it actually would be. Uh, and this little, little blob of stuff on here. Uh, it's not a dielectric lens um, in any way, shape or form. Um, so there we are. 